The wait is finally over guys, Isaiah Rashad has just dropped his second studio album, The House is Burning, and this is a great time to be a TDE fan. We have been waiting 5 years for this, almost all the way since 2016's The Sun's Tirade, that was his first studio album and got massive critical acclaim. But listen guys, we're here now, we finally have the album, and we're going to be doing a full review of this. Um, we've listened to it a couple of times, we have our verdict on it, and I think we're going to have to deliver this guys, and listen, leave your, uh, let's say, critiques for the album and how do you guys rate it and use our scoring system with this? Yes, yeah, so the way that we actually review albums is a bit different. So we actually have a scorecard system where you rate albums on different categories. So we have artist performance, we have content, we have features, production, instant replay value because keep in mind that these are our thoughts after you know a very few a limited amount of listens so they're bound to change so we have the instant replay and then of course our overall score and we actually have a grading system that starts off with bad moves up to mid then good amazing and perfect which is a very hard score to obtain but with Isaiah Rashad's The House is Burning I mean we knew that he would be telling us about what he's gone through in the last five years the ups, the downs, and the different emotions. And I feel like that's what he put out into this album is, you know, kind of a time capsule, a, a time capsule, excuse me, of what we just missed. And also, you know, what he's been feeling, what he's been thinking. And I mean, there are hits, there are misses for me on this, but overall, I did enjoy the experience. Absolutely. It was a it was a good listen as far as start to end. I mean, it was it was a good entertaining album, and I got a lot of different insight out of Isaiah because, as you just said, we haven't heard from him in five years. Not only that, but going into the singles that I dropped, I also understood that there was going to be a style shift in the way that he was going to be delivering this content. Yeah. Now, it wasn't going to be the same type of aesthetic that we had gotten on Sylvia Demo, on Sylvia Demo, excuse me, or The Sun's Tirade, but that's not the to say though that we don't get classic Isaiah Rashad flows within this so let's actually dive into the artist performance um this is where we're going to start this guys and we talk about flows and different types of things that go on so how did Isaiah do on this for you he did pretty good I mean I would say that um you know he originally had said that this album was going to be more up tempo and we do get you know more of the high voltage in your face tracks on songs like lay with you or from the garden where he's being very aggressive with his delivery and it's kind of you know very different from what he's done in the past and I was expecting more tracks like that but in a way I'm happy that he stuck to the very soulful cadences that he's been known for because where he seems the most comfortable and in his bag are on songs like R.I.P. Young or on songs like Headshots where he just you know takes you through the smooth southern delivery and I mean he's really one of the most soulful rappers out there and he capitalized where he needed to on that on absolutely that and he even did his thing with Smino on Claymore like I also love the melodic performances that he yeah. was able to deliver like it wasn't something where I feel as if he was going too out of his element with it because Isaiah has always had great melodies and great flows to his arsenal so it wasn't you know it's too different for me to see him go into like that sort of area on let's say you know Claymore with Smino and at first I actually thought that Smino was delivering the verse jokes enough I think it just it tricked my ear and then I was like oh fuck okay this is actually um, an Isaiah verse and then obviously it transitions into Smino's part which we'll be talking about on the features yeah. so um, there's a bit of a gripe I do have though is that I feel as if in certain instances um um, I like the all, like you know the slurred and laid back delivery on you know let's say songs that we see with like Lay With You, but sometimes I feel as if they get a bit overused throughout the album. And um, one thing I love Isaiah Rashad for is his writing, and I feel as if sometimes that delivery kind of gets in the front of that because I'm not necessarily able to hear all of like the punchlines like first yeah. time or whatever it is. So maybe I'm gonna have to have a bit more of a an experience with it and going in the future and aging with it. But for now, off the first listen, like that's maybe a bit of a gripe I have. Yeah. Yeah, and we had said, you know, before the album came out, just based on the singles, that this will be less of a lyrical album from from Zay. And that's kind of what it proved to be. But, you know, you do get introspective writing on songs like TH, THIB and HB2U, which we'll dive more into in the content category. But aside from that, I mean, it was more vibey tracks than lyrical stuff. And it's kind of hard to adapt to because I'm used to more of the lyrical tracks in the past from Zay. But he did have some clever lines, which were, you know, you could have told that he had fun with the bars and with the wordplay. So one of the lines was, I just put blades in a bulletproof range. I could cripple Liu Kang. Yeah. So he did have, you know, those very playful references and that sort of stuff, which is is very fun to listen to. And I mean, to me, it just it showed that Zay had a lot of fun crafting the bars and probably freestyling a lot of this. I feel like he did freestyle most of um, of the bars. And I think there's a song 9 to 3 freestyle, which you know, also played towards the end of the track list. So 
What's your overall rating for the artist's performance? Well, I'm already looking at a couple of standout tracks for me where he did his thing on Hey Mister or let's say True Story and even Don't Shoot where he had more, let's say, laid back flows and, you know, it was more on like him pronouncing, you know, certain words and then, you know, him getting into his harmony. So overall, I think it was a good performance. I feel as if like there was definitely room to improve on like the lyrical side of things yeah. where, you know, let's say more intricate writing or, you know, in classic Zay style, like maybe giving more imagery and maybe more storytelling. But overall, Overall, it was a really good effort because I got different types of styles from Isaiah that I hadn't gotten on previous albums, and it showed me maturity and diversity within his artistry, so I was happy about that. How about you? Yeah, What's your rating? I, yeah, definitely a good rating. I think that, I mean, it was great at times. At times, it felt lackluster just because I feel like the rhyme schemes weren't as complex as they could have been, and he was kind of just more loose with it, which did, get more of, which did give more of a fun atmosphere, but I mean, at the end of the day, he did his thing, and he remains, um, you know, one of, if not the best soulful rapper in the game. So Absolutely. Let's move on to content because any Isaiah album is guaranteed to be full of um, gems and beautiful stories and, you know, hills, valleys, peaks, whatever you want to call them. So yeah. going into this, what did you expect content wise and were those expect expectations, excuse me, met? I mean, they were met to some extent, but in other times, not really. I mean, going into the house is burning. It was built up to be a concept album, I would say. And you do get that in certain senses because he is often rapping about his experiences, you know, going through his alcohol addiction and more so his weed and drug addiction on this album. And, you know, he starts off with that on Dark Side where, um, you know, he, he's rapping about how he wants to get his life in order just to provide for his kids and to be um, the best father possible and to have them set up. And then you go um, to a song like All Herb where he's rapping about how, um, you know, if he dies to due to a, a drug addiction or to or due to whatever else like he's letting people down he has people counting on him you know to survive so you know i think he realizes kind of um the weight that his decisions have and that you know it's it's kind of in his hands but at the same time nothing's nothing in life is really controllable so he has to take that with a grain of salt. Absolutely. I guess. And I also, I love the track, The House is Burning, just because of the concept of it. I feel as if, like, especially with the haunting production, the concept fits super well because you're kind of like in Isaiah's shoes and you feel as if, like, uh, you know, your bad mental or let's say the bad part of your psyche is like knocking on your window and like it's kind of disturbing you. And like, that's what I feel as if Isaiah is going through throughout the song. And then if you go like verse from verse, he starts talking about like, let's say, a bit more darker subject matter that he's on and like him more in his like, in his darker sentiments stuff that he's like maybe not afraid to show about himself so i like that and That's, i like how it tied all together the house is burning is probably my favorite song on here and oh, i really yeah i love it so much just because zay is getting um as dark as he'll get on the entire project and you know throughout the actual chorus he's saying how people are fucking with his conscience and like who's that knocking on the window yeah. and that kind of displays the paranoia that he's going through because of the weed that he's smoking essentially and then he also talks about like Okay, what's my purpose in life? Like, what am I here to do? He's searching for, you know, a higher purpose. He's searching for that faith. And, you know, it's kind of unclear if he ends up turning to God or not, but we do know that he considers it. He doesn't really, you know, know for but sure. But that's what's cool about the song, though, is that it's it's written in a way where it could be interpreted in many different variations. Yeah. Like, it could be, like, him and his psyche or, let's say, him, like, you know, overusing pot and getting into that paranoia state or maybe him and his life as a whole feeling like as, as if it's, like, one big, like, let's say, confusion and him being like, yo, where the fuck am I going? And yeah. who's really there for me knocking at that window? So You feel like that's he maybe lacks direction, like, I would say, for his own personal and soulful journey. Do you think that he's lacking that in this album? Like, where do you think he's at, like, headspace-wise after hearing the project? Uh, that's a hard question to answer because I feel as if, like, that's on him. Like, I wouldn't necessarily be able to pinpoint you where his psyche's at. And, you know, I, I don't oh, from think... From what you got, though, like, No, I, I think... Because the thing is that I feel as if, like, he, he's in a good headspace. I feel like he's because, at peace. No, he's at a good headspace because you see how the start of the track list was on a much lighter note and that there was a lot much lighter and like let's say more playful content matter and even some of the harder tracks like let's say lay with you that had more of like a, a thumping beat and more of like a darker sort of production was still light in content matter and more had of like a party vibe to it so that was nice but as you get down through the end of the track list it starts getting a bit more trippy and psychedelic it almost feels as if like there's a sort of distortion to that beautifulness and that's how i feel as if the overall track list progressed and he delivered that well um, but for me, it's kind of like, 
I'd like to see, you know, where he goes in the future with certain things. Yeah, I mean, I think we're going to have to give this a good rating on the content. The only reason why I wouldn't put it as amazing is because there are certain tracks um, like from the garden, like Chad, where I feel like he could have done more and kind of, you know, gets very... I feel like he he kind of wastes the runtime in the sense that he's rapping about the same thing about, you know, having girls in the car and just like going off for rides. And you hear that content matter... I would say, on more than one song. And it it just kind of feels like a waste. And I think that's why we didn't give it an amazing rating. Uh, The the main reason for my good rating, I would say, is just because, like, it did what it did. Like, it wasn't something where I was dissatisfied with the content. No, like, I was happy with it. It's just, like, it wasn't anything that I'd gotten off of the Sun's Tide Raid where I would have given an amazing score or, let's say, even Sylvia Demo. So it was kind of like a dip down in, like, let's say, the, the, the overall... I would say quality of the content, but it didn't hurt the project in the way that it was delivered because I feel as if it had to be that way for the overall, let's say, um, thematic cinema- basis. cinematic value of the yeah. album. So, um, listen, I think it was super well calculated, but let's go on to the features because this track list released and that, and there was a lot of big W's, um, especially starting with Black and Scissors. So, when you saw those names um, being paired together, what did you think and what were your expectations? Oh, I definitely had high expectations because, I mean... They're two of the best vocalists in the game. And Black just sounded like it was effortless for him to, you know, to give that little riff that he had. And, you know, SZA has one of the most beautiful voices in all of music right now. And they both really shined. I wish that their parts were maybe a bit longer, but those were definitely standouts for me. How did you feel about Uzi, though? That's a question I have for you. It was... um it wasn't anything with him. I feel as if I've just, um, I've been sort of leaning away more and more towards the trap genre. So I've had a hard time, like, you know, buying into a lot of different sounds. I, I Listen, I love his breath control. I love how hard he goes on his flow. Um, his delivery was super quick and, you know, it was definitely a great Uzi verse. But it's just like, I, I've heard that type of Uzi before, you know, so like what's, it didn't necessarily do anything more for me. Like it could have been discluded from the track list and I wouldn't have felt hurt by it. Yeah, say. exactly. It wasn't necessary. So what to you would you say? is the best feature on the house is burning j-rock for sure like j-rock absolutely yeah, I agree stole, with you. stole the show here especially with like the the quirky flow that he delivers because i'm used to j-rock on more of like a redemption sort of vibe where it's a bit harder where he's like a bit more aggressive and let's say like to himself with his flow um you hear a lot of his pain and conviction throughout it where this it was just like he, he was really just trying to match his delivery with the beat and like it was at a certain point where i was three beat switches in sorry flow switches and i was like Oh fuck! Okay, and, like, I I understand what he's going for. And his features have been crazy lately. Even on like the lockdown remix, I mean, J Rock is just showing that you know, like he raps on this song, he's a top dog alumni, and you know, he's been at this for a while, and his skills have only sharpened over time. And we saw that through the bars and through um, just the confidence that he brought to to it. But the other runner up for best feature for me is probably Duke Deuce because I mean that crunk inspired verse was amazing and. The flow switches were great too, and he just brought he just brought this extra bravado to that song and really added a lot of flavor to it on Lewicha. Absolutely, and let's also talk about Smino and Claymore. Like I loved what he did for their for that song because you would see that when it would reach the chorus, the song would slow down, and then when Smino would pick back up his verse, the tempo of the song completely switched. And yeah. I loved I love when Smino is able to do that because that's his best like asset. I feel as if is him controlling the tempo of a song, him controlling the emotion and let's say all of the energy that goes through it and the way the listener receives it so i was super impressed with him um shout out amindi by the way for uh, a beautiful uh, let's say verse at the end of all herb like i it was it was kind of like r&b infused like i feel as if it wasn't singing and it wasn't rapping yeah, but and, there was that middle point and she to helped it. bring out like the psychedelic elements of the song with her vocal performance and the way that she stretched out her notes it was very well done so overall i mean the features were pretty good. I think we'll have to give it a good rating because nothing really besides, let's say, J-Rock, Duke Deuce, or a couple of female vocalists really shine too bright. And that's a good thing, though, because, I mean, Isaiah was really the center focus of this project, and he really um, captivated us from beginning to end. Absolutely. Like, it wasn't a situation where, um, again, the features overtook the, the whole, like, yeah. let's say, track list, and you weren't able to understand what Isaiah was saying, and then, you know, let's say they had too much runtime. No, this was well calculated, especially, like, with the amount of big names that you have on this track list. Like, they should have gotten longer parts, but it was a sort of thing where, okay, I was happy because I didn't hear Isaiah in five years, so I didn't want the features having too much of a part on this playlist. So they did that super well calculated. It is a good rating, but let's move on to the production 
production because again when you go into an isaiah uh, an isaiah album excuse me you have to expect crisp and beautiful production so what again what were your expectations going in producing wise and do you think that the production matched the overall let's say thematic basis in quotations of the album yeah for sure because like oftentimes isaiah's vocals are very like melancholic and the beats do feel mellow for the most part but to me you know opposite to that on the contrary like lewicha that beat was probably my favorite on the whole project just because of the bounce it had to it um the three six mafia sample um the snare drums really hit hard it was just that was a home run for me in terms of uh, of the sonics of the album shout out hollywood cole that was a fantastic production um yeah and then also kenny beats did his thing on uh, the song with uh, sizz and black which which one was that that um, score score he did his thing on that one too apart from that i mean i love the jazzy um elements that were added towards the end of the track list a standout for that was don't shoot where you kind of had the saxophone the saxophone playing throughout the end and i wish i had i had more of that more of the, the jazzy uh instrumentals but a- apart from that i mean even the vocal samples on let's say the house is burning or uh, even the on even on the outro track those are really well done too absolutely even let's say the way like uh, dark side had started off with like those um not haunting vocals but like it felt like as if it was a f- like a 50s distorted record if you understand yeah. what i'm trying to say it um the way that he was able to introduce the album on that note was great um shout out by the way to devin malik um he's an in-house producer at td 22 years old and has a bunch of producing credits on this cal banks um, also has quite a few yeah. production credits as well so he uh, devin malik produced all herb um he also did true story with j-rock and Jay Worthy, and then after that, I had also done Chad nine to three freestyle, and I believe that is it from what I'm seeing right here on the oh and Dark Side. Mm. So it, it overall, like I think the production was good. I don't think like it's like um how could I put it? It's not like a Brockhampton Roadrunner situation where like you know the 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 track list had to be carried with the production. I feel as if like this was much a this was much of a looser attempt, um, especially on the production side of things. And I feel as if that's what was needed. Like you couldn't have anything too complicated with this. Like it had to be good and that's what I feel as if they did right with it. It was something where I wasn't disappointed or it wasn't like, okay, that's like, you know, best produced rap album of the year sort yeah, of contender for me. And if anything, I mean that's just a compliment to Zay because you know, we see a lot now in 2021 where a lot of albums are actually carried by the production, but here it kind of just seems, I wouldn't say like background noise, but it just seems like a nice compliment to um, the vocal showcases and the different flows and deliveries that he's tackling on the album. So it was good and it was needed. So apart from that, we have our last category, which is instant replay. So um, after, you know, the first few listens, do you see the sticking in your rotation and what makes you want to dive more into the album? Well, the f- first things first, this is an extremely um, complex, I would say, track list to go through just because of all the different types of productions we've gotten. Um, there's a big element of psychedelic as well into this. So I want to explore that further. I want to see what Zay's talking about and maybe see if there's um, deeper layers to the writing. So listen, in my eyes, I think the instant replay value is amazing because this is a situation situation where Isaiah Rashad has been retired for five years okay I haven't gotten a studio album from him since the Suns tirade and I've been waiting for content and the thing that I'm happy about with this project is that he has given me stuff to digest maybe for the next couple of months maybe even to a year like this is something where I'm gonna sit with it I'm gonna enjoy it and I'm gonna see where I could go with it so how about you like where do you see this fitting into your listening and do you think that it's gonna let's say get to your top tier albums by the end of the year this is gonna be one of my most played albums of the year for sure and it's because of how rewarding um you know zay's writing is and also the fact that there's so much time that he fit into this album like think about it like this is like personal experiences and just you know thoughts that he's blended into one project so that to me merits this an amazing score because there's so much more that i probably missed out on in the first few listens that i have to go back to to pick up on and not only that but i mean this gave me, you know, a lot of songs that I can bump late at night. Look at Headshots. I mean, that's one of my favorite songs of the entire year. And I mean, his soulful delivery really makes it easy and very digestible to consume on a daily basis. And, you know, like we were saying earlier, there's probably a lot that was kind of slowly squeezed into the track list in terms of subtle bars and just um, things that play to the bigger thematic scope of the project. Facts. 
And it's going to be interesting to dive further into it for sure. Absolutely. So listen, guys, on that note, we are we obviously have our overall rating. If you guys haven't caught on by now, we're going to give this a good rating, guys. Honestly, like this was a good album. It was a good listen and I enjoyed it. And this is going to be an album where I feel as if I'm going to have this in my rotation for, if we, for months to yeah, come. If we had like a great category, we'd probably slot into that because it's not quite amazing right now, at least. It might age better with time. But I mean, like, like we said earlier, I think that... Um, he could have maybe done more with the writing on certain songs. Certain passages felt repetitive from one song to the next where he was kind of, um, you know, just taking us through an average day in the life, driving around um, the way that he would splurge his money when he was, you know, not in the best state of mind. But apart from that, I mean, we also got really strong highlights like headshots. We got the houses burning towards the end where he gets introspective, talking about wanting to find that higher purpose and take control of his life. And Isaiah really gave us a lot to sit with here. So as much as in concept, the, the thematic basis could have been maybe better executed, it still gave us a lot to sit with and a lot to digest, you know, with the time to come. I could have not said that better. But listen, guys, thank you so much for coming through this whole video with us. And this has been a rollout that we started at the beginning of the year. And um, honestly, it's been crazy to talk to all kinds of different TDE fans, um, all types of Isaiah fans, because we know there's a, a bunch of you guys on the channel. And it's been an awesome experience going through this whole rollout and review with you guys. So listen, leave your sort of scores that we did in the episode in the comment section. Um, we'll be going through those, of course. And listen, if you like this review, you. If you have not already, please subscribe. We will be covering the biggest um, releases of the year. So again, another reason to subscribe, guys. I appreciate you watching this video and we'll catch you in the next one. Thank you for watching the video. It's always a pleasure doing content for you guys. Listen, if you haven't already subscribed to the channel because we're doing album reviews and we actually have our series called Everything We Know where we take you guys through the whole album rollout of the hottest releases of the year. Not only that, guys, but our Patreon plan is now live. You guys can access that in the bio. I appreciate you guys and I'll see you on the next one.